Wahi naket. Ayo mai ona mana kikanga kiringa ya tata. Oya nora iro tinga tini ahu tanga. Ira rira rina ya awanga awanga na itehunga. Tefana oya no tena katua tua kwa kumoi miti kia ya no kia yu matu kia tayo mai ona mana kikanga kiringa ya tata. Hayara hi hai tika kia mana kia tata. O te roa ngā tū o tēnei rā tāngo o te kikuna o tēnei hui anō rā. Ka hoki mai ngā mihi tā tātou kua hui hui nei. A i runga i tēnei tū apapa. Ko mihi, mihi kia. Tōra koutou. Ko koha āpirahama tōku ingoa. I hail from that beautiful valley known as Matawaia, right on the heart of Ngāti Hine land. I tēnei wā, kei te wāri matua haurau e mahiana. I'm at the DHB as Kaipakahaere Maternal and Cell Health Program. And I've also been uh, working alongside Liz and Pam and Rita, uh, delivering our kaupapa, known as Hoki Kinga Tua Papa. I just want to talk a little bit about the logo that you see in the corner here, in the top right-hand corner of your screen, called Ngā Tata Ihorangi. Ngā Tata Ihorangi is a, is a program of work that we've been utilising in the Hapu Wānanga space across the Tai Tokero. Uh, was born out of uh, our hapu wānanga and really talks to a philosophy of practice that talks about acknowledging the potential of connection. So connections between Bano, connections between hapu, connections between kaimahi, all that um, create the connection to invest and, and contribute to the outcome. And so Ngā Tata Ihorangi sits in this space to talk about the potential of, of all our connections and all our contributions that we're making into this chaos of COVID-19, as we call it. Uh, but every contribution uh, absolutely works towards an outcome. In the last lockdown, we all contributed to keeping Te Tai Tokero safe from COVID-19. And that was by all of us investing in the outcome and absolutely we achieved that. And so we decided to ramp that up again and to think about uh, how we might refresh and revitalize our, our messages that we had in the first campaign and actually start to look at um, talking to the potential of those connections. So Hoki Kinga Tua Papa talks about going back to basics. Hoki Kinga Tua Papa came about um, when we had our case in January and what we heard, what we noticed, what we felt in our communities was the level of anxiety immediately from a low went to an extreme uh, feeling of um, almost fear, I guess hypervigilance, super, super anxious to the total opposite, which is absolute apathy and pretty much thinking I have no control over anything Therefore, I do nothing. And so that kind of motivated the thinking around what we might do to revitalize the messages in this space to absolutely bring and restore some balance, absolutely talk about those things that are within our control. Oh, there we go. Oh, you yeah. Help to, to bring us back to a state of rongo, of peace, so that we're able to consider information um, in the messaging. So uh, before our vaccination program rollout, uh, we started to I, we started thinking about running a campaign like this in, in parallel um, to really talk to the things that we have control over. So one of the things we know for sure, kei te whānau, kei ona ringa ringa, Te ranga tiratanga o tōna oranga. Fano actually have ultimate control over their oranga, and actually they know what that oranga looks like. So one of the things we thought about is providing some of the messaging, some of the information around the things that we can do to help protect our Fano from not only the spread of COVID-19, but also other viruses. In our last round of lockdown, what we saw was a huge reduction in the number of Fano that had severe sort of um, complications as a result of flu. We saw our tamariki were, were well, they hardly filled the, the children's ward. So we saw 
quite a shift. And one of the things we know that made the difference was some of these basic messages that over time, when we came out of lockdown, we started to sort of get a little bit more complacent around until that moment when we had that case in January. And that's when the anxiety started to take over again. So one of the things we decided to do was revitalize these messages to bring back that uh, that idea that actually te rongoa. So to bring us back to a place where we actually feel in a, in a space of rongo, of peace, to actually hear the information and make choices about what these practices might be. So one of the um, key um, sound bites that we've used a lot is actually um, reconnecting with the practices that nurture well-being, because actually we have a whole lot of things that we do to nurture well-being that bring us into a place where to activate our rongo. So we know that when we're feeling quite um, anxious or when we're feeling things are out of our control, that it's really hard to, to hear what's being said, to consider uh, all the information before making an important decision. And so when we started looking at how we're going to roll out the vaccination program in Te Tai Tukero, one of the things we wanted people to really think about is what does this mean for my whānau? What does it mean for me? What does it mean for my whānau? And is this the choice that I want to make? And so we started to talk about vaccination being one way to protect your whānau and your whakapapa. So the COVID-19 vaccination is one way, but we also have other ways we also have other ways of engaging some of those practices, such as washing your hands, covering your cough, era mumumia. So we started to form the messages and we did um, quite a bit of work in creating some, some um, key messaging that would go on the radio. We also did some work to run these types of workshops with our kaimahi Māori, because what we know is that actually our, our whānau will always, first and foremost, ask whānau. So, you know, we know that the actual people who hold the most, um, who hold the most truth are whānau, for whānau. So one of the things we did was, well, how, how about we share, that we the, uh, share this information in a way that um, our kaimahi Māori could digest could take on board and they then could share this or this corridor with their whānau and their whānau will share it with their whānau and so on and so we've done a, a bit of work with um, the radio scripts which we'll see shortly with um, the workshops that we're currently running very similar to this obviously our first preference is kanohi ki te kanohi hoi anō koe te ahua tanga o te kōwhiori nei uh, and so the key messages that we, we started to promote was hand washing. And actually, you know, simple messages such as, you know, immortal queer. So this, this is an example of one of our um, scripts that we wrote. And you see the top there talks about me whakapapa te ora. So whakapapa isn't limited only to genealogy, but it's also, it's also um, related to a person's story, a person's life journey, and the way they tell their, their narrative about their, their oranga. So me whakapapa te ora was our commitment to actually promoting and offering these tools and offering this information so that actually we can contribute some kōrero hei whakaaro, some kōrero that Pano can consider when making choices about what are those practices that absolutely nurture their well-being. This next line here that says, I mōhio queer, that's something I took from my tamariki. Whenever they're trying to tell me stories or tell me about all their wonder, wonderful information that they've learned, they always ask me, mōhio queer, did you know? Just in case I don't know. So that we decided to put that in because it's absolutely um, kind of the flavor we wanted to use to share this corridor. or it's just did you know that immunization is one way to protect whakapapa and that whānau begins with whakapapa and it is our greatest taonga tukuiho 
So when you think about whakapapa i te ora, what does that look like? What do you want to contribute? What is your legacy? Mera momo mea katoa, heha tō tāunga tukuihu. Because we know that all of the things we do in this, in this time absolutely impact all our mokopuna, mokopuna that are coming. And so all the work we put into this space now is actually not about us or our tamariki right now, but it's actually about all of those tamariki that are coming. And so what does that look like? And always that this is just one way to protect ourselves from COVID-19, kia puma te ora, to maintain well-being. And well-being is so important in this time of, of uncertainty. But absolutely reinform, reaffirming the message that, you know, keaku ringa ringa te oranga, that actually, you know, I have control over some of these things. I actually have the ability to make a choice. And that's really um, a big part of what we're promoting the Roto Ite Hoki Kinga Tua Papa campaign. So this one is a good one because it's good for tamariki as well, you know, to remind ourselves tamariki are the best little carriers of information, you know, and that's why we, we made sure to include that imohokwe because, you know, our tamariki, if you tell them something, if they agree with you, they'll remind you as, as, our, as they do, as they remind adults that, you know, washing your hands for 20 seconds, no more, no less, 20 seconds helps to stop the spread of disease. And absolutely, this is, this is a key to helping to prevent the spread of COVID-19. And it's something that's absolutely within your control. And so there's about six of these um, that we focused on, and they follow the same, the flavor. I don't know if you, if you noticed that what we, how we wrote them, we're absolutely in a positive, affirmative um, language because this is absolutely about valuing all of our whānau, even those who choose absolutely not to vaccinate, they're actually, it's really important that they still continue to engage in those practices to nurture their well-being. And so we really wanted to frame these up um, as a way of honouring the value of people and honouring the value of Fano and all of the contributions that they make itenewa to arrive at the outcome, which is hopefully that we we we're free to move without worrying about the ngārāra to COVID nineteen. So uh, we did radio ads. We've done these uh, workshops for our kaimahi Māori, and we continue to offer these workshops similar to this. We also um, did some mahi around animation, getting some of our messages animated. And you might have noticed um, some of this, some of these pictures around the place and, and of us. And have you, are you able to play one, Liz? Unfortunately not with the headset okay. on, no. But OK. We well, can you share. Can, and so we yeah, so you're going to share these with everybody? Yes. Okay. So these are just another way of delivering the same message. So it's absolutely those same scripts that you saw. Because the other thing about this chaotic space is having a consistent message. So we know there's so many messages out there that we wanted to have at least our messages remain the same and a, and a consistent no matter what. And it was always about immunization as one way, and here are these other ways of protecting ourselves and our whānau from spreading COVID-19. That's it, that's... Oh, kapai. So, hui anō, hui anō, um, that's our kaupapa, and uh, it really is back to basics. It's messages that we know, and we just decided that we needed to revitalize and bring them back because as we said when we when we're in a space where we're quite anxious a lot of the response is still anxiety whether it's hypervigilance or whether it's total apathy it's absolutely an anxiety response and so we really bring back this kōrero kei aku ringa ringa te oranga mo te whānau kei te whānau te rangatira tanga o tōna oranga 
So whānau actually have have the have the ability, have the tools to take care of whānau. Nā reira, ko tēnei ka mātou, tautoko atu, this is how we support te rā kaupapa, kia hoki ki ngā tuapapa, kia noho haumaru i tēnei wā. Kia ora koutou. Kia ora, Koha, thank you very much. I'm sorry, I couldn't can't see the um, comments when, we, when I'm sharing the screen, so apologies for that. Um, but um, so what we're going to do is send out all the resources. You can download the animations from our website and use them on your social media channels. Um, that we have radio campaigns playing across all iwi radio and mainstream radio, um, and we have graphics available as well. So um, we'll provide those to you if you're keen to support that campaign. I'd like now like to hand over to Rita from iMac. Thank you. Thanks, Liz. I'm just going to share my screen. If you can just guide me and tell me if my if I still have the right one up there. Uh, no. Is that my notes page? That's the notes page. Yes. Okay. Let me just wait for that stuff to go away. So I put all this other stuff up here now. Um, Let's do this. Better now? There we go. There we go. Kia ora, everybody. My name is Rita Miller. I am the COVID education facilitator up here in, um, in Northland. Um, so just a little bit about myself. I'm originally from South Africa. We arrived in New Zealand on the 1st of January 20, 2010. That feel like a long time ago. Um, I arrived here with my husband and two boys. Um, we lived in Auckland until 2020, December last year. And then me, hubby, and uh, my little girl, who's now 10 years old, moved up to Whangarei on a little lifestyle property here in Mangatapere. Love every moment of it. I've got my two boys still in Auckland. So I haven't seen them in a wee while because of um, lockdown. And they're both studying there. Um, I am a nurse by trade. I started my nursing training in 1996 and I've been working for IMAC for roughly about four, four years, going for five now. And today I would really just like to see with you going back to basics, um, doing an introduction to COVID-19. And before I forget, I promised the team of, um, of Tiha Ora Onapui, who I worked with very closely the past couple of weeks, Tia and the team. I just want to do a little shout out to them. And so thank you for making me feel so welcome and including me into your little family. Okay, so going to talk to you about COVID-19. So we will go through a bit of um, what is, what is COVID-19, having a bit of a look into the global impact, signs and symptoms, how do we prevent vaccination? And then obviously what is IMAX role in this whole thing? Now, as you know, viral diseases, many viral diseases, of course, oh, there's a little bit, somebody's it's not on mute. That's Just better. More rain, yeah, that's it. Thank, Thank you very much. So many viruses cause respiratory diseases like the common cold, influenza, SARS, and even now the COVID-19 um, is definitely causing some respiratory diseases. Now, Corona viruses are named um, for the spike um, protein, the surface spikes, which looks like a little crown, um, corona in the in Latin language. Oh, that's a bit far. So just going a little bit back. So it's not the first time in the history that we've got pandemics. Um, I don't think most of us will remember some of these things because it might have been before our time, but we've had the Spanish flu, we had um, H1N1 swine flu, not, um, I think that was in 1918. And that specific one killed about 9,000 New Zealanders. It killed 2,500 roughly estimated Maori people. In Samoa, 22% of the population were wiped out because of this. So this is not the first pandemic that we've had, but this is a big one going throughout the world as well. 
when we look at the global impact of COVID-19, here you can see this little line here is the death rates. You will see how many, you know, the death rates and throughout the world, um, it's still going up and down. You know, then we kind of think we've got it a little bit under control and then the new variant comes and it just causes havoc. So some of these stats is from last week. That's when we updated the slide. So we will see from at the 16th of September, we had 226 million cases of COVID-19. That's throughout the world. We had more than 4.6 million deaths. New Zealand itself, but on the 16th, we had about 4,000 cases with 27 people dying from this, this awful, awful virus. Australia, 8,000 cases, 1,128 deaths, Fiji, and even in the USA, we see these things happen. We also know, this is on the 15th of September, how many doses has been administered worldwide. That's millions and millions of doses of COVID-19 vaccines. So with these kind of data, you know, we can have quite a good idea of what and how safe these vaccines are. Now, just looking at the transmission, this is nothing new for most of you. You know this, that um, coronavirus spreads, most probably with droplets. Um, so if people cough and sneeze, um, you can either inhale it or if it falls onto surfaces, when we touch those surfaces, um, going to our mouths or wipe our eyes or whatever, we can get um, this virus um, you know, it can infect our bodies as well. And that's why it's so important that we follow these other measures of protection as well, that we wash our hands, that we clean our surfaces, that we wear masks, that we cough in our elbows. All those things protect us and, and prevent us from spreading um, the virus. Now, just going over the common symptoms, as you know, usually people with COVID-19, very much like flu, um, flu-like um, Symptoms, you have a fever, you've got a new or worsening cough, so, sore throat, shortness of breath, running nose, and obviously that loss or change of sense of smell. Less common, we get diarrhea, headaches, sore muscles, nausea, sometimes a bit of confusion. So these, as you can see, these things are very much like the common cold or the start of the flu. So that's why we urge anybody who's got these kind of symptoms to go and get a test done to stay home when they're unwell, so we don't spread these things. So the biggest focus with COVID-19 is prevention. So we would like to prevent the spread, and there's a couple of ways how we can do it. Infection prevention, hand hygiene, PPE masks, uh, clothes. Um, it was my first time wearing all of those gear when we had the lockdown levels and we went out vaccinating. Um, that's all measures to protect ourselves and our whanau and the community around getting this disease. Isolation, lockdown, and of course, our vaccination, our COVID-19 Pfizer vaccine that we have at the moment. So the names can be a bit confusing. There's, there's quite a few names for our beautiful vaccine, a little, very tiny little viral vaccine. Um, so the media will talk about Pfizer or BioNTech vaccine. It's the brand name is Cominity. Um, which presents a combination of the terms COVID-19, mRNA, community and immunity. So beautiful how they put these things together. Um, there's, for the clinical trial name, it's got all these letters and numbers in there. And then our immunization handbooks talks about the mRNA, CV or community vaccine. <clears throat> so how does this vaccine work? So basically, this vaccine is made from mRNA, the genetic material, from the spike protein. And what happens after the injection, your muscle cells will start to produce this viral protein. And this protein is then recognized as foreign, and then an immune response is stimulated. So this does not go into our body's DNA. It does not interact with those. So just in words, the messenger mRNA is the template. It's the recipe for our cells to make this protein. It's delivered in a little bit of a, a lipid nanoparticle. So a little fat bubble surrounds it, protects that because this little mRNA is quite um, fragile and it makes it easier for um, to go into our bodies and to um, bind with the cells. 
And then obviously this mRNA will then instruct our bodies how to make the spike protein, which will then be recognized as foreign. And then our B and T cells will um, be activated and produce antibodies. So then we will start at having an immune memory down the line. Um, so if we get in contact with this real virus, then our body's already got the, 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 the message on the, the, the army of soldiers ready to start building up and getting more to get on top of this disease. Now, this is a video that's on the iMac website. Um, I'm going to try to play it, but I don't think the sound usually works on these kind of presentations. So if it does not work, Liz, can you just tell me if the sound does not work on your side? Sure. So it started, yeah, but I don't. No. You it's can't hear it. Yeah, very lightly. Can you turn it up? You could hear it. Vaccines work by teaching the body's immune system to recognize something that causes a disease, like a virus. It also creates an immune memory. Is it too soft? A wee bit soft. Okay, I'm going to stop it then. But on our iMag website, or the COVID-19 one as well, you should be able to see this little video. That's a real beautiful animation on how this vaccine works. So it's, it's, it gives you a really good idea how these things work, especially if you get clients in who's a little bit hesitant and you find it hard to describe how it works, you can show them this video. It's really, really cool. Okay, will you go to the next one? Let's just go next. Hey, COVID-19 vaccine. Okay, good. So prevention, that's what we are focusing on. And we've got quite a bit of, um, you know, really good people out there that's really stand up people in the community who had the vaccines, who we can use as um, role mo models for our young people and for our people saying, see our people, even our, you know, superstars, people who get, you know, medals at the Olympics, they got to get the vaccine done and they're still doing really, really well. So what is in the vaccine? This vaccine is so simple. It's got these four kind of components, only four. It's got the mRNA, that, that's the antigen. It's got the little fat bubble that surrounds this antigen. There's sugar in there and salt. Now, these are the only things that's in these vaccines. Um, and this is the most important thing about everything, because a lot of people will ask you, what is in that vaccine? Um, I'm allergic to eggs. Can I have this vaccine? Um, I've heard that there's animal products in here. I heard that there's, there's fetal cells in here. This is what is in our vaccine. So the fats that's in our vaccine, um, they surround this genetic material, which will help it to go into our bodies. And they do not dissolve in water, which protects this mRNA. So it doesn't break down when it gets into our body. Um, there are four different kinds of fats in our vaccine. One of them are obviously cholesterol and majority of people who do react against this vaccine uh, will most probably be uh, because of this little fat bubble. We've got sugar in there. The sugar is there specifically to stabilize um, this whole thing during that freezing pro process. Um, just making sure that the bubbles of fat is not sticking um, to, let me just see what it says, sticking to other sides or on the sides of the vial. So that's why we've got the sugar in there, keeping it nice and secure. And then the salt that's in there <clears throat> is to help with the storage and the balance of the acidity in our bodies. So four types of um, salts is in there as well. So as you see, these are the only things that's in the vaccine. That's why we know there's no live virus in there. It cannot cause you COVID-19 disease and it cannot enter the nucleus of our cells. So there's no microchips in there. Nobody can track you if you had this vaccine. There's no human or animal cells, no antibiotics, no blood products, eggs, nothing. So this vaccine can be given to most people quite safely. So what we want to achieve with our vaccination is herd immunity. Now, this is quite simple. Most people of you know how it works. So if you look at this little graph here, if we've got one person who's not immunized, who's infected, who's sick, the green ones are the people who's got the vaccine, but a lot of other people around them 
you know, didn't get the vaccine or, you know, don't stay home and or this person doesn't stay home, this person can go and infect a lot of other people. And the only ones who will be uh, mostly protected will be the ones who had the vaccines. But when we get most people vaccinated and we still have that one sick person in the middle, we will get the best protection for most people. We'll get less people getting sick from the disease. That is the aim from our vaccine. You can, with, with our vaccine, we cannot prevent people from getting disease, but we can prevent people from getting this disease very severely and end up in hospital and being sick for a very long time, end up dying. So that is what the aim is from our vaccine. So how effective is this vaccine? Our vaccine, if you get two doses of our vaccine, at least three weeks, we now want it about six weeks apart, you get about 95% protection against severe or symptomatic COVID disease. So 95 out of 100 people are protected against symptomatic disease. And if you don't have symptoms, then obviously you don't cough, you don't sneeze, you don't spread. So, and that is the biggest aim that we are looking for at the moment. This is also data from last week, and I'm sure if we've went over and above these numbers already, we know that we've been vaccinating out there, the teams, you know, everybody, if there's a chance of vaccinating, they are vaccinating. So we've been vaccinating huge numbers, even in New Zealand. Um, if you think about, I think we've reached more than 3 million first doses. Um, and this number is even bigger at this stage because this is last week's data. So thank you everybody for your hard work, for spreading the message, for having those conversations with people who's got some doubt around this vaccine by sending them to the right ways, right places where to go and look for information. I find this slide quite interesting because a lot of people are asking, how can this vaccine be developed so quickly? Now, obviously, there's been a few things that's already been in place, which I would like to share with you. When we think about the fastest vaccine ever developed, um, that was the mumps vaccine in 1967. So in 1963, um, Maurice Hellerman, his daughter developed mumps. And as um, doctors and nurses sometimes do, they will quickly have a look do a swap, put it in the fridge and, you know, and then look after the child, you know, you kind of just first look how bad things are, patch it up and, you know, then do that little bit of caring. So he took a swap of his daughter's throat and he started working on that swap. And that was 1963. So 1967, we, st we had a mumps vaccine, which we're still using today. Um, that same strain is in our MMR vaccine today. So that took about four years. Ebola vaccine took about 20 years to get something out there to, you know, for us to use. And then people is like, well, things took so long back in the days. Why are we doing it so fast? Now, when we first, first started seeing like MERS, Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome, that was around 2012. That disease like SARS is also caused by coronavirus, but it's much more deadlier, 35% um, people who get MERS will die. So much more fatality rate with that disease. So we had a couple of um, scientists working on this. They started looking at how can they manufacture a vaccine by using the spikes, not the virus. So it's less invasive. So they worked on this for a very long time. They tweaked the little, little mRNA to see how things, you know, how can they introduce this, make this a, make this a vaccine. And that took quite some time. That was in 2012, they started looking at it. So around 2015, they got these things sorted. They got it down to a T and they were, you know, yep, we know how we can make a vaccine with this. But by then we don't have, we didn't have any MERS or SARS anymore. Nobody was interested in developing a vaccine for that at this stage because it wasn't a problem. So they put that, that technology in the back burner. But then all things started to change in, nine, in 2020 um, Mac, Mac Lallan, he was one of those scientists. He was out snowboarding with his family when he got a phone call saying there's this, um, this coronavirus that was, that's in Wuhan. Um, let's keep an eye on this. Are you interested in to work with this further? 
So as soon as um, China has um, posted the sequence of, or the genome sequence of this virus, they started working on this and they had a vaccine or they had an idea how to make this vaccine within, within an hour. And from there, things developed quite fast. So things, people put money in place. A lot of clever people got together and started thinking, how can we, what can we do? What can we help? They started running steps in parallel. They started building manufacturing plants even before they knew if this vaccine specifically is going to work. So with all these things, they still ran these, these phases. They ran through them in sequence. They didn't wait for somebody to look at the data and had a little conversation about it. And then information goes back. While people were starting having the conversations, they started with the next step to, to see how can we make this as fast as possible. So our vaccine has been in the making for the last seven years at least since we had MERS and SARS where they started working on the sequence. So I still think that if we had a different virus um, circulating, not Corona, we would have been in a much, much harder place at this stage. But thank goodness we had some people who worked on something um, so we can have a vaccine quite ready um, for this. So it hasn't been that fast, actually. So our role in IMAX role in this whole thing is to make sure that we can support our healthcare workforce. Our, we've got a 0800 immune health line, um, as you know. Um, we are working Mondays to Sundays from eight till eight on our 0800 number. So if there's any, if we can do any support, you know, on immunizations, um, please give us a call. We've got a beautiful COVID-19 website where you can see lots of our um, webinars, lots of information, all the new resources are on there. We are providing heaps and heaps of education, not just you know, part of this, we are training lots of healthcare workers to become vaccinated. Um, we support our coordinators. So we are quite busy out in the field like everybody else, making sure we get people all ready um, to do you know, the important work. Um, just quickly going through the safety of these vaccines. So we know these vaccines are safe because we've seen, we've, we've um, been given millions of doses worldwide. This is one of the vaccines, you know, that we can really say, wow, you know, we've, we've got some numbers. We know a lot about the, va the vaccine. Um, pregnancy breastfeeding is usually a question that a lot of people will ask. Is it safe? Can I have it in pregnancy? Can I have it while I'm breastfeeding? And yes, at this stage, we'll say, any time of your pregnancy. If you're pregnant and you get coronavirus or COVID disease, you are four times more likely to experience really, really bad disease complications. Even our little babies can get, you know, um, when mom's unwell, baby obviously will, will suffer as well. So with our large scale data, we haven't seen any safety concerns um, with this vaccine during pregnancy and breastfeeding. We also know that um, at this stage, if mom had the vaccine during pregnancy, when baby is born, baby is born with some protection as well. It's in the breast milk, so some protection goes through there. Um, not the vaccine, but the antibodies will go through to baby, giving them some protection. But always remember, this is a person's choice. People can make an informed decision about this. Nobody is forced to have any vaccines. It's a conversation for people to go take the message, go home, think about it, and decide if that's going to be the best for them. Other questions that we get about COVID-19 vaccine, um, we usually get a lot of calls about people who are immune suppressed, like they are on chemotherapy or they're on high doses of um, prednisone, methotrexate, all those things. And we will still say, go ahead, vaccinate, don't delay because these people, although they are immune compromised or the immune status are suppressed, they are at a higher risk of getting COVID-19 disease. Yes, the vaccine might be suboptimal, but any bit of protection is better than nothing. No medication interfere with getting your COVID-19 vaccine. So it doesn't matter what medicines they are on, they can get their COVID-19 vaccines. Who should not get the vaccine? The only people at this stage where we will say no is people who had an anaphylaxis 
to a previous COVID-19 vaccine? We will say no. So I will be very hesitant to vaccinate somebody when they come in. That is always been a contraindication. We are not vaccinating under 12 year old at the moment. Things might change in the future. As you know, we are looking into the five to the 11 year old people. Um, looks like half a dose might be, you know, good enough for them. But we've got no, we're not doing that at this stage, at this stage only from 12 years up. Blood clots, that's another thing that we usually get is blood clots. Blood clots is not linked to the Pfizer vaccine. So people who had blood clots or are on blood thinning medication or anything like that, still safe, go ahead, have the vaccines. This is something that's been happening or that's been in the news the past couple of weeks and that the myocarditis and pericarditis following the mRNA or the Pfizer vaccine. It's very important that we remember that we include in our conversations with our people that if they present with any acute chest pain, shortness of breath, palpitations, especially in young males, then um, go to the doctors, go to the hospital, get it checked out. There is about 40 per million. So that's about four people per 100,000 that, that develops um, myocarditis. We commonly see that with our males under the age of 30 and most, mostly after the second dose. Yeah. So if you are vaccinating those age oh, groups, young... My computer's playing up, so I've been using this one. <laughs> so young males under the age of 30, make sure this that is, um, they know... The one we give to Rita. Make sure that they know about this so they can get it checked mm -hmm. out. People who had a history of a prior myocarditis because they had flu, or whatever, they're not contraindicated to have the vaccine. People with any other cardiovascular problems, not a contraindication. It's only those who developed it after the COVID-19 vaccine. We will not give them the second dose if it happened after the first one. Uh, <clears throat> so there is a, a slight risk of um, myocarditis with the vaccine, but just to put it in perspective, if you get COVID-19, you have a much higher risk of getting myocarditis than with the vaccine. It's just important that we know about this and can inform people about this. So my final words to you, and I am not going to try to pronounce it in Maori, but I'm just going to say in English, by joining together, we will succeed. And I have seen us all working together and sending out those messages and talking and continue doing that, continue, you know, the conversations is sometimes tricky. And I'm sure with the next, you know, with Pam talking to you, you will kind of learn a few tools how to, you know, manage those conversations. Don't leave those conversations for other people to do. If you've got the knowledge and you've got something to share with them, tell them about your side of the story. And always, always remember to respect people, you know, when you're dealing with them. I didn't include my contact details up here, but they're on the IMAC website. Most of you um, will find my information there. So if you've got any, anything that you want to run or ask, please call us and um, we're happy to help you going, for, going further. Thank you. Was there any specific questions here? Thank you so um, much. Can you hear me? Yeah. Sorry. Um, the biggest thing that I find with people, I'm really surprised, are anti vax or hesitant, is the long term effects of the mRNA. Um, so I heard that the vaccine, they've been doing the mRNA stuff since the 1990s. Um, and this, they, they're pretty sure there's going to be no long term effects. But what's the biggest, what's your thoughts on that, Rita? Yeah, that is something that we do get a lot. You know, at this stage, we only know what we know. And from what we know at this stage is there's no side effects. People are concerned about fertility. Is that going to, you know, with the, um, they've looked into the sperm counts of males, you know, in those infertility clinics and stuff. They haven't seen any changes in those things. So I think we can, we can say to people, you know, it's, it is scary. We don't know what we don't know. But from what we've seen of the science and what is in this vaccine, there's a really low risk of getting anything, you know, severe down in the, in the future. But we don't know. We, can own, we learn with it as we go.
Thank you. Well, kia ora. Well, thank you so much, Rita. It's lovely to have you with us again today. And we will share all of we will we will share all of the presentations with you. Any contact details, we'll share the link to the iMac video um, and all the animations, etc. So you'll end up with a big uh, big kitty to um, help resource your work. So hi, hi Liz. A tuhane here from Ngati Wai Trust Board. I put into the chat a question for um, Rita around um, are there any other medical conditions that prohibit a person from getting the vaccination? Sometimes I've heard people say, oh, I've got a medical condition that um, uh, means that I can't take the vaccination. Uh, well, do you have a list of those that you can't? No, this is really one of the vaccines that most people, the only contraindication at this stage is an anaphylaxis to a prior COVID-19 vaccine. And obviously, if you develop myocarditis from the first dose, we won't give you the second dose. They will most probably wait until we get a different vaccine to vaccinate those. People who's got allergic or anaphylaxis to one of the fat components, the PEG in our vaccine, um, even those are slowly, people are slowly starting to vaccinate them to see how things are going. Haven't seen any problems with that. So with the, I can't think of any disease or condition that will stop you from getting the COVID-19 vaccine. Not at this stage. Many thanks. You're welcome. Okay, kia ora. Thank you very much. So I'd now like to introduce Pam. I'm just going to share the screen for, for Pam. One moment. So how's that, Pam? Is that all good? Yep, kapoi, Liz. Ah, he mihina nui ki a koutou katoa. Uh, no Nati White, Nati Fato and Napuhi Aho, ko Pam Armstrong Takuengo. Uh, it's lovely to have so many um, on today on uh, the Zoom. And um, I'm not too good at the Zoom thing, but I'm going to give it a go. And um, this particular session, the last part of, of today's uh, Kopapa, is about having tricky COVID 19 corridor. Um, and why we use the word tricky is that. You know, there's a lot of uh, misinformation out there and people that are naturally ambivalent, um, if not resistant to um, vaccinations and that. And so it's about how do we have that type of corridor so that we keep people's mana intact and recognise um, their autonomy to make uh, the decisions in the best interests of their whānau. Okay, next, uh, Liz. So what we're going to do um, in, in this uh, session is we're going to talk about um, some basic communication techniques that can help spark behaviour change. And many of you are probably already familiar uh, with these, but think of it as a bit of a, a refresher. Um, but it, when we use good techniques, communication techniques, it actually helps whānau feel more informed about the decisions um, that they make for their own well-being. <clears throat> So the first thing about um, motivation to uh, remember is that we all, it doesn't matter what, at some point in time, we are not necessarily motivated to make a change, even when others may think it's in our best interest to make a change. So it's, it's natural that um, some people are resistant, um, that some people are ambivalent, and um, some people, well, most people, if not all, don't like to be told what they need to do and should do. So um, during the session, we're going to talk about how to work with that. Kia ora, Liz. Next one. So in motivational interviewing, there's actually um, four, key, four key goals. The first one is around self-discovery. And... Uh, well, I guess we like to figure, figure out things for ourselves. The average person um, loves it when they uh, discover the ideas themselves, as opposed to be told, it, told by others, you know, you should. Um, and so when an idea pops into our mind um, and we can claim it as our own idea, then we're more likely to embrace the idea. So that's what self-discovery is all about. And then I mentioned ambivalence. Eh? Ambivalence 
is such a normal thing where we, on one hand, we think mm, maybe, and on the other hand, we think maybe not, you know, and whether that's about we want to, um, like in my case, I've got lots of ambivalence about um, exercise. So sometimes I think, yeah, maybe I will. I will get out and do that. And then, you know, next minute, no, nah, maybe not. Right, so just recognizing that ambivalence, we all experience that at some time. And when it comes to um, COVID, there's a lot of ambivalence out there. So how do we work with that? Uh, the other goal is around uh, change talk. Now, um, change talk is basically when we make statements that reflect our desire to make some kind of change, whether that's to have a look at getting uh, vaccinated or to embrace some of the um, wellness strategies, you know, washing hands, coughing into our elbows, those types of things. Um, so that's change talk, and we'll have a little bit more on that uh, further on. The other thing, uh, the other last goal around uh, motivational interviewing is that, um, you know, yourselves as the kaimahi, your... Um, it's about recognizing that people have autonomy in decision making. They understand their whānau better than anyone else. They're the experts when it comes to their whānau. And so our role as kaimahi is that of a guide, right? So we're kind of um, providing that information, helping them guide them through a whole lot of noise that's out there around COVID and that and helping them see, okay, well, here's some of the best information you can get. Here's some of the facts. Here's some of the resources. And, um, yeah, yeah, just being that, that guide um, and boosting their confidence that they have the ability to make the best interests, uh, the best decisions in the interests of their whānau. So those are the four key goals. Uh, kia ora, Liz. We look at the next slide. Yeah, so there is a process um, for motivational um, interviewing. And um, it, well, essentially, it's like, first of all, engage, engage with whānau. And then um, listen to what, what it is that they're unsure about or resistant uh, with. Now, if people are like, um, they've already made the decision that, hey, a vaccination is in the best interest of my whānau and that's what I want to do. That's good. That's Kate the Pie. You, you don't have to focus there. Where, where you do need to put your focus on is those who are ambivalent, really unsure, um, want to know more about the real facts or those who are uh, resistant to it. Like, you know, for whatever reasons, nah, I haven't heard good things. I don't want to do it that's where you put your uh, your focus and then you work with people to evoke what are their reasons uh, around this and uh, agreeing on a plan forward that's at the heart of the MI process so um, there's oh it's a very small on the screen but once again emphasizing again autonomy and making decisions we should never force people by threatening them or um, you know or belittling them um, and I'll, I'll give some examples later of what that can look like, but always recognizing whānau should have autonomy and choice in making uh, their own decisions. Um, mastery and a sense of competence in making the change. So when people have good information, are well informed, of course they're, um, they're competent in, in making the decisions for their whānau. And the third one is about relatedness. Um, and just a sense of being supported by people like your, yourselves. And there's a lot of faith that people uh, still have in healthcare professionals. Um, but as Koha had said uh, earlier, um, they're more likely to take our messages from Fano. Um, but people they trust, that's where people will have more listening for. But I want to say for, you know, those in the helping professions, in general, there's a lot of trust in people like yourselves. So next slide, please, Liz. So I mentioned before about this thing called change talk. 
And uh, in, um, in motivational interviewing, uh, you know you're on the right track when you hear what we refer to as change talk. And that change talk, examples of that are when, you know, so somebody comes and say, no, 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 I, I heard all about this and there's no way I'm going to get this done. And uh, when you offer them information and you hear things like, oh, oh, okay, well, maybe, maybe I should look at that. Oh, I'm going to have a think about this. You know that you've been quite effective in your strategy around, uh, around uh, your communication because you hear that maybe, maybe I will. So there's been a little bit of a shift in terms of that resistance from nah to mm, maybe. And then the next step, of course, is for them to uh, have time to think about it and then are most likely to make um, the choice, the next, which is the next step. So that's, that's change talk. You really know you're on the right track when you've got people hearing the information and then saying, mm, okay, maybe, okay, that, I didn't know that before. Uh, I, I'm going to look at this, right? Those are all examples of, of change talk. Okay, so the next slide is about... Um, 50-50 quarter or and I've got a little bit of a, a oh, I think it's a cool definition there of 50-50 quarter or but basically, you know, I'm sure you're uh, familiar with 50-50 quarter or it's, it's about when you get the conversation going and you spark that whole discussion. And, um, you know, there's, uh, well, for example, with 50-50 quarter or one of the common things is like, you want to get a conversation going for Māori, no hair queer will always get the conversation going, right? So you want to first of all be able to get into a conversation and then keep that going. And um, you've heard a lot of the why from Koha. What? Well, why do we want to have these conversations with Fano, right? And um, because it's about the, the whole theme of of this of this um, kaupapa, which is hooky. Kina tua papa. We're wanting to get back to the basics. Um, and the other thing too, if you want, if you want good 50-50 corridor, you have to be able to give informed corridor. And that's what Rita's whole session was about, is that people are going to ask you some questions about, well, hang on, look, I'm on heart medication. What's that going to mean for me? Um, well, I'm I'm pregnant. I've heard these things that it could do a lot of harm. People have got real concerns um, and fears. And so you can allay those concerns and fears if you actually have good information, right? And then, but if you said things like, well, actually, I've got no idea about that, then people think, well, no, no, he's talking to you. You don't even know the facts, right? So um, it, it's really good to have the information. If you don't have the information, is it really important um, not to make it up or to guess at it? Because if they find out something different, you know, from somebody who does know, they'll say, oh man, I'm speaking to so-and-so and she doesn't even know what she's talking about. Or, oh, his information was all up the chute. So you lose credibility. So if you don't know, don't make it up, right? Um, but you, what you could do is say, look, um, Oh, I heard, I heard uh, Rita speak the other day and she was from IMAC and she gave us these resources. Or you could say, look, I got these resources. They're on the Northland Health website or I can send you this information or here's a great booklet. So you can refer them where to get good information from. Or, you know, if, it's, if you know of a, uh, one of the health providers, refer them to that rather than... Um, guess, guess at the information or we're still make it up and possibly be wrong. So 50-50 corridor, um, it's being able to engage with Fano and, and have that conversation so that you can get across some good information to them. Um, okay, so our next slide is about, you know, because we can, uh, is about mana enhancing creating a mana enhancing environment. I want to talk a little bit about this because no matter how good your um, communication techniques are and that, 
and even uh, you might be very knowledgeable on the COVID, there's some things that can get a, get in the way of the uptake of good messages. And uh, yes, yeah, so if I could just take a moment to talk about the importance of a mana enhancing environment and connection with people. So um, if you, and I heard some stories about um, from Fano, you know, when it was busy and there were long lines and that, um, about how wonderful it was when people come along and says, oh, how are you going? And they might say like, well, I've been waiting quite a long time. And then they go, well, I'm sorry, let me just check how much longer it's going to take. Um, can I organize um, a, a, a cup of tea and a biscuit for you? Um, you know, that just really helps those things like that. And I heard people say, oh, I went to one place and it was so lovely. I did have to wait ages, but you know what? They offered a cup of tea and they gave me a biscuit or something, or they were so lovely and polite with that. Or we had some nice music on while we had to wait. Um, it was, you know, so it's about creating that environment where, um, people feel welcomed and people feel comfortable. I also heard on the other hand, you know, people who said, oh no, they were, they were quite rude there. I couldn't be bothered. I'm not going back there again. I'll just, I'll just wait. Right now that's, that's not a good start, is it? Right. Um, other things too, is like they said, oh, I heard, uh, I heard this organization, you know, gave people a, uh, a cup of tea or a bottle of water and uh that was pretty good but when we went to this place we didn't get offered nothing in that um so you know just having a think about it if it's cold you want to try and make the place warm all those things all those things help um with creating a an environment where people are more likely um to to feel um, that there's genuine regard for them. Um, okay, so just remember, mana enhancing is quite um, quite important to underpin everything. The way we talk to each uh, to other people, uh, and I'm going to go through um, uh, four what they call the four principles of MI motivational interviewing. So remember I talked that sometimes I was saying earlier that, you know, there will, pe will be people that present to you with resistance. Now, how do we recognize resistance? Well, it's in, it's in the statements that people make and all of you would have heard some of those, um, uh, those statements which, which show that people have some level of resistance. It might be that they say, ah, no, I can't be bothered. It's just, it's, it's, it's really whore heart to even go in and, and, and get this. Oh, no, I can't be bothered with, um, I can't be bothered with all of that. You know, who, who knows what it could do to you? Um, I've heard that um, you can be tracked through these COVID, um, through the vaccination. They've got a way of tracking everything you do so you know there's some resistance you hear it in what they say even if there's far out what they're saying and you think that is absolutely ridiculous um the thing is you don't say that's absolutely ridiculous you've got to roll with the resistance so once you hear that um resistant corridor and it could be resistance not only in um in what somebody is saying but also in the way um in in their body language right you can detect resistance so when that happens your goal and if you are applying these principles is to roll with resistance now if you've ever been involved in martial arts they don't um confront force with force they roll with resistance Right, and it's the same thing here in communication. When you hear something that's quite resistant, it might be they might say, well, what do you know anyway? You know, you're not a doctor. You're not a researcher. What do you know? So you think straight away, well, 
heck, I know quite a bit. I've been to the workshop. <laughs> now, you know, you might be quite informed, but it might push your button when somebody says to you, what do you know? Who are you? With that tone, right? You're tempted to, you're tempted to push back. But with this role with resistance, what you do is you say something like, um, like for, for instance, if you say, they say to you, well, what do you know? And you, you could say, well, actually, I've heard some really key messages um, that are very informative uh, about this, and I'd love to share those with you. So, you know, it's the tone that you use to roll with that re resistance, because um, no use coming back and, and putting a tone in your voice and saying, oh, excuse me. Um, or don't talk to me like that. I'm actually, I'm, I actually know quite a lot. That's going to take you nowhere, right? With that person, they're just going to switch off. So that's why this is kind of one of the first principles is roll with resistance. When you hear people like that, you know, watch your tone. Um, just remember, what does mana enhancing look like? Keep people's mana intact. Don't make them wrong. Just roll with that resistance. Um, Okay, the next one is, and a way of remembering all of these is, is this acronym, A, REDS. So R is roll with resistance. Then there's E, express empathy. So it might be, gee, that must be confusing when you're hearing so many different messages from people. So you're able to sort of, um, the, the goal with E for express empathy is to try and um, Lincoln touch base with what it is they might be feeling. Uh, so they might be feeling uh, fear. They might be feeling um, anxiety. Whatever that, whatever that is, you want to try and touch touch that and say, oh, so that can be quite um, uh, that can cause a bit of anxiety. Um, and then they'll correct, you know, they'll either say, yeah, absolutely. Or they'll correct you and they'll say, no, it's not that I'm anxious. It's just that I'm, I'm a little bit unclear with all these different, all this different corridor going out there around, you know, should we be vaccinated or not? Right. So you start, when you express empathy, you do get that corridor flowing and people um, expressing what it is that's concerning them. D is for develop discrepancy. Right, so um, there's, a, there's a lot of people out there that on one hand, they're hearing, um, they're hearing these messages, right, which are concerning them and they're thinking, nah, nah, that's not me. I, I, I don't think I'm gonna get um, vaccinated. But on the other hand, they hear a message like, um, you know, Fano begins with whakapapa and it's the greatest he tonga tuku iho. And they go, yeah, I'm down with that. I certainly support that, right? So um, they've got they've got this whole discrepancy thing going on. On one hand, nah, I don't want it because of this. But on the other hand, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I do believe it's important to protect our whānau. So I, I actually heard this example of um, uh, this one guy who said, um, Look, I'm here today to support my uh, my daughter um, because she wants to get it done. I don't, but she wants to um, because the you know she she wants to make sure that the mokos, my mokos are are protected from anything. So she's going to go ahead and do that, and 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 good on her. That's what she wants to do. So you know um, what they did, what you can do around this because that's classic discrepancy is just, just feed that back to them, say, oh, okay, so I'm hearing on, on one hand, you're, you've decided that this is not for you, but then on the other hand, you're really supportive of, of your, your daughter um, making that decision. And then you can add that, you add this little bit extra to have them think about it, which is um, because it sounds like you really do support um, protecting the whakapapa and, and it is a tong or right, Matai? And they'll go, yes, yes, right? And you go, mm, okay, so you're sitting there with those, mm, those two things. And you just, um, you just pose it back to them. And uh, it's most likely 
nine times out of ten, not always, they have that little shift and think, oh, no, maybe, maybe, yeah, I'm saying two different things, but what do I really want? You know, and then it just might help shift that decision. Okay, and then the last one is support self-efficacy, right? So self-efficacy is around everybody with the right information are capable of making uh, the best decisions in their situation. And that, so being able to um, su support that, uh, always having that, that uh, belief that people are capable of making the best choices once they've got the best information. So those are the principles. I wonder, do, does anybody have any, any questions before we move on? There's just a couple more slides to go, go through. So this is, this is the first key one, eh, around remembering the principles. Pam, it's Sue Honey here from Ngāti Wai. We were just having an internal chat around the strong um, anti-government um, control narrative that's out there that somehow, you know, by getting vaccinated that, um, you know, this is a, a form of um, government, government control of our people. Um, how, how do we, you know, because this isn't, this isn't an undermining of our rangatiratanga, this is trying to support our people to make informed choices and exercise their rangatiratanga, eh? Yes, yes, and that's where you'll come back because they'll say, oh, you know, and this is some of the, uh, when I said you'll hear resistance, it's like, hey, we hear, we're hearing it on the TV, we're hearing it everywhere. We're being forced to. Look, I've even heard that people are going to lose their jobs if they don't do that. What about human rights? Straight away, you know, there's resistance caught at all, but you're aware of those messages. <coughs> and um, that's where you can come back, just like what you said, Huhana, reinforce, hey, we still determine our rangatiratanga. At the end of the day, whānau make the choices that are best. You know, and when someone hears that, you know, you, you will make the best choices in the interest of your whānau. That's our rangatiratanga. But can I just um, offer you this information so you can have a think about it? You know, offer them the information, um, which is different from sort of saying, you need to read this information. You need to know these facts, right? It's offer that to them. And, and, and always support this whole thing about rangatiratanga, people's ability to make um, informed choices in the best interest of their whānau. Um, yeah, because this whole, th that's why MI is a good kind of philosophy technique approach. Oh, sorry, MI is really an approach. Um, because it does do that. It affirms the whole notion that Fano make the uh, best place to make the choices about their well-being and future, but it has got to be based on having received the best information possible. And because you'll be that person who offers that information and takes the time to listen to them with, I mean, because listening is um, quite a uh, quite a a skill. Actually, I'll move on to the next slide, and we'll look at 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 um, some of these. Oh, okay, it's a slide after this. Let me just go through the do's and don'ts. I'll, I'll go back to the do's and don'ts. Um, do roll with resistance. So when somebody is um, for whatever reason is very resistant, right? Just roll with that right um uh, let me give you an example if i i could um because uh, because it's it's the difficulty and the challenge of working with whanau who are, are resistant without you getting hoha already yourself you know and getting impatient with them because you're thinking far out they're way off they're way off course with their ideas and that why don't they just listen to me and get it done right they're not going to listen to you if you're not going to be able to roll with this re resistance and and um, be money enhancing in the way you work with them so I want to share the story which happened um, when I took my mum into um, the doctors one time so we live out at Fananaki and I usually ring up ahead of time because um, you know I, I, I want to make sure that 
when we get in there, everything's right and she's not waiting around. So I did, I rang up doctors, checked, okay, appointments on time. We went in, I got in there, the receptionist, I could just tell from her body language from the get-go, she'd, she'd had had a bad morning. Um, and this was early, this was like 9.30, but I already knew it was a bad morning, morning because of the tone that she used. And she just, first of all, I got to the desk, she just kept me waiting. And then uh, she came over and she said, yes. And I go, oh, I've got an appointment for my mum. And she says, what's the name? I gave her the name. And then she goes, no, I don't have anything down here. I said, no, I'm pretty sure you do. I rang up and checked. And uh, she goes, well, no, no, no. You'll have to take a seat and um, we'll, we'll see. And uh, so I said to my mum, you sit down, I'll sort this. And um, I says, well, can you please go and find out because we've come in all this way and um, I know the appointment was scheduled. And she she actually rolled her eyes, right? And uh, then she went away and next minute she's on the phone um, and I can hear the conversation. It's not about what I had asked her to look, to, to find out about. Anyway, she comes back. By then, right, by then, um, my... Um, What's the word? I'm starting to get very impatient, right? And um, even though I know these techniques myself that I should roll with resistance, I recognized it straight away. She's got resistance and she's had a bad morning. She comes back and um, she says, oh, oh, okay, now, um, hang on. What were you wanting? I says, I was wanting to know, and this is me, straight away tone. I was wanting to know, have you sorted out this appointment? And uh, she goes, um, oh, yes, yes, yes. Just a minute. So she goes in and then she comes back and she says, yep, there's a, um, I've sorted it, but you're going to have to wait. And uh, she says, you're going to have to wait a little bit longer. I says, uh, okay, all right then. So when at... Um, when we finally got to go in, 30 minutes later, after our scheduled time, um, my doc the doctor says to my mum, oh, and how are you today? She says, I'm fine, thank you. And, uh, and he goes, and how are you? I go, I'm not so fine. <laughs> we had to wait. We had to wait um, quite a while. He goes, oh, gee, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. And he goes, but look, um, Let's, let's get on and do your check, Mrs. Rata. And like his manner was so lovely. It was mana enhancing. He was rolling with the resistance that clearly I was bringing into the room and that. And um, yeah, when, when we left the, the little session with the doctor, he says, he says, look, you have a good day. I'm sorry it didn't start off very well uh, with us, Hulk, keeping you waiting and that. And he says, but... Um, he says, I want you to enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, then when we went out to, um, you know, to uh, uh, leave the consultation, I said to the uh, receptionist, because I'd got over myself by then, and I says to her, uh, look, you, you have a good day. And that, um, I says, my mum got to see the doctor. She's happy with things, and we're looking forward to a good day, and I want you to have a good day too. So that was it. But, you know, my whole point in this is she was doing a lot, a lot of the don'ts. Um, and you can go a long way in imparting good information if, first of all, you recognize people's money. You might have had a bad day, but that is going to impact on others. I can't emphasize that enough. It's how you be that people have a better listening for for you right um because you hold good information that can help people make good decisions but if you can't get that across in a way that's mana enhancing and the way you be your message is going to go nowhere and then you know and then um i i can for example just say i'm i'm i can see who hana and them on my screen at nati y trust board now if if they if they were rude like that, whānau are going to go away and say, Ugh, I don't want to go back to Ngāti Wai Trust Board. Um, no. That receptionist was so rude. 
Um, but they're more likely to say, man, I met, um, I met someone, I can't remember her name, but she was from Ngati Wai Trust Board. She was so nice and just took the time to um, listen, to listen with me. And I had a really good court at all. Can't remember her name, but I know she was from Ngati Wai Trust Board. So you see how that flows over from whatever organization you're from, people are going to remember that and that. So that's just a point to, um, yeah, just listen to people and have good body language and always roll with resistance when you hear it. The don't is about don't pressure people. Don't try and control things and fix it up. Um, don't use scare tactics uh, with people. And if I could just share again an example of a scare tactic, and this came from my own niece. And uh, because um, my mum had heard this information that, oh, no, actually she'd heard it from my sister, who said, no, nah, no, nah, I'm waiting to find out a bit more about this whole thing before I go in and get it. And then, so this is my mum, no, nah, no, nah, I'm waiting a bit more, because my niece says to her, Nan, you, you haven't had your vaccination? And she says, no, nah, no, nah, I'm waiting to find out a little bit more from this. And um, this is around the don't. This is what my niece said. Oh, Nan, I can't believe that you're so stupid. And they said, what do you mean? What do you mean? Because this is a favorite more call, by the way. Um, so she, my mum can take it from her saying things like this. Nan, you're stupid. And she goes, oh, what do you mean? And she says, well, Nan, don't you know you could die from this? Seriously, Nan, you could die. And I can't believe that you haven't been in to do it. Now, listen, you just need to go in. Otherwise, I'll take you. I'll take you if you want, because people are dying from this. And you're not well. And so you're in one of those high categories where you could, you could, you could die, Nan. I'm serious about this. <laughs> and I'm laughing now. At the time, I didn't think it was very funny. And I was going to my niece, oh, look, don't be, you're a bit over the top. I said, she'll go in and. And she'll do that. I says, uh, um, actually, you know, I, I've got some good, um, I've got some good booklets on that, and um, I sh we should talk to her about it. Not blimmin' scary. She says, I'm not scaring her. I'm just stating facts. And that. Now that's a classic. What we say, don't do that. Don't be scaring people. Don't be trying to force them, fix it or control it. And that it seriously doesn't work because. Um, after that, you know, after that, my niece had gone on to her, don't worry, your nan's going to get it done. I said, <laughs> my mum says, hey, we better hurry up and get into town. I says, no, we're not rushing into town. We'll take you in. But, you know, don't be, don't be scared by that. I said, she's just concerned about you. But, you know, I, I had to calm my mum down. She thought, oh, my gosh, am I going to die from this? And that, so be careful around how we um, put out the messages, eh? Because we literally can scare people. And that's not, that's not what we're wanting to do. Neither are we wanting to be controlling um, with others. So, um, yeah, it, it's about how you convey the messages to others. So let's go on to this um, second to last slide and look at the... Um, at the key communication skills. So we talked about REDS, which is the principle, and then ORS. We use acronym um, ORS for these key communication skills, which I'm sure you all know, but it's worth going over because sometimes um, they just go out the window depending on the situation. So the first one is always start off with open-ended questions. If you want to generate and spark good court at all, start with open-ended questions. And um, that's why one of them is no hair queer. Where, where, where are you from? And getting that um, conversation going with an open-ended question. So um, yeah, practice, practice with each other, having those open-ended questions. Because you might think that's easy, but um, with a stranger, it's not so easy. So just have a little practice about having, having a conversation uh, with each other, with colleagues, with whānau, and using those open-ended questions. 
Um, the second one, A, is for affirming. Um, and so that's recognizing and commenting on people's strengths and abilities, you know. And so, um, uh, you know, perhaps um, if my niece had said to my mum, um, Nan, I know you're, you're quite an, an educated, informed person and that's so, um, you know, what, what have you heard? What have you heard about um, the do's and don'ts of, um, of um, vaccinations? What have you heard about keeping yourself well, right? So you can affirm people in different ways. Um, now, just say, because people have said to me, how do you affirm someone who is so grumpy and rude? Um, and, and you've been trying to do your best to listen to them and give them good information, and they've been just downright rude to you. How are you expected to affirm them? Um, and that's a good question. And one of the things I say, well, you know, affirm, you can affirm people. Uh, one of the ways you can affirm them is like, well, look, you know, good on you for taking the time to come in today and to just listen, even if you think they haven't really listened to you. The fact is that they're there and they're hearing you. So affirm them that they're actually there today. They've taken the time to come in and they are listening. They're listening to the messages. It's up to them to make the decisions. But, you know, if you can say, well, you know, I, I want to say uh, mihi to you for coming in today. And uh, they might say back to you, in a fat waste of my time, that was too. You can just keep rolling with the resistance and say, but you did come in and cured her for that, right? So you can, no matter what, you can affirm people. Just like me in the, in the doctor's um, practice and that, when I said back, well, you have a good day. When I said back to the receptionist, well, you have a good day, right? So you can affirm. And always, always remember to affirm it. It's, you know, believe me, it goes a long way because afterwards they might say, gee, she was quite nice, that person I was speaking to. She had a lovely smile. And yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't really, I didn't really like going in there, but she was nice, right? Because you affirmed. So don't forget that it goes a long way, believe it or not. And so that's A for affirming. R is reflective listening. Now, it does take a bit of skill to do reflective listening. I can tell when people aren't doing reflective listening because they're on their phones while you're actually looking at them and then they look up at you and they go, oh, sorry, what was that? Now, that is not reflective listening because <laughs> you, you're not giving people your full attention, right? And uh, they might only need your full attention for one minute Two minutes, it gets harder when it's beyond two minutes. But, you know, give your full attention. Don't be looking at your phone. Don't be reading your other notes and that. Look at them and have genuine listening for them. And that goes a real long way to building engagement with somebody. And then um, reflective is when you kind of reflect back what they were saying. It's like paraphrasing. You know, they might have been saying, well, you, you could ask that classic thing that everyone seems to ask is, how is your day? Um, and you know, when you ask, how, you're, how is your day? I hope you mean it because when people come back and say, well, actually, it's been a crap day, then you think, oh, <laughs> God, you, know, you don't know what to say. <laughs> and that, so um, don't ask questions if you, if you genuinely um, don't want to hear the answer to it. So they might say to you, well, actually, it hasn't been a good day. It started off pretty badly because, you know, I came into town, couldn't get a parking here with you fellas and went round and round before I finally got a parking. And then I, I had to wait quite a while, to be quite honest. Right. So then you reflect that back to them. And I hope in there you remember those principles of expressing empathy. And you could say, oh, that must have been that must have been difficult trying to go round looking for a parking. Um, it can be it can be really difficult on a Tuesday morning like that. Um, so you know you're feeding back to them what they've said. So if nothing else, they think, oh, she's listening, you know. And you go, that must have been a whole half for you, eh? And they go, yeah, it was. 
straight away they feel, oh, she is listening to me. So um, even, you know, when you get it wrong, most people will correct you. Um, so they just, believe it or not, it is a fundamental thing that people want to be listened to. So reflective listening is simply reflecting back what you've heard them say. And that keeps the conversation going too. And they're more likely to say a yes when you say to them, hey, would you like some information about this? They're more likely to say yes than to just cut you off and say, no, nah, no, nah, I'm not interested. Thank you. Right. And so um, they're also more likely when you hear them say something like, uh, for instance, um, I heard that, um, you know, it's actually potentially got poison in these it's got it's it's got these things in these vaccine I've heard that you're able to say I know there's some messages out there around that and and those are of concern because do you know what in these um, vaccines and if you had been listening to Rita you'd be able to say you know there's this in it there's sugar there's water but there's definitely no poisons in there they're more likely to listen to you when you give that information to them. They go, oh, really? But I heard this. And you could go, no, look, I'm I'm 100% positive that this is what's in these. And I've heard this from IMAC, and they're the experts on that. You know what I mean? You're able to give good information back to them. You don't want to be saying things like, really? Is that right? That's not good reflective listening right, because you're just kind of enforcing the, the incorrect information that I've heard. So there's a little bit of skill in the reflective listening, and it really helps if you have got good information you can feed back to them. And the last one, S, is for summarizing, right? So ORS, O-A-R-S. Um, summarizing at the end of it, you want to do uh, just a brief summary of your discussion with them, your corridor that you've had with them. Now, you might think, well, why would I summarize when it's been all like, when they've been unhappy, they've been actually rude to me and um, they just want to go out of there. Well, it is worth summarizing because that's your last chance to leave them with a positive message and a positive feeling about you, you and the organization that you represent right? You might say to them, uh, well, Matua, I know you've expressed that you're really concerned and you're, you're fixed about what you want to do. You feel it has been a waste of time coming here today, but I want to thank you for at least taking time out to come in, for at least taking the opportunity to listen. And I, I would invite you to take this information with you. And I want you to know that you can ring us up at any time, come back in at any time. And I just wanted to mahi to you for that. Kia ora matua. Right? You do that, they're going to remember, gee, she was, she was actually really nice. You know, I had a whole high experience, but she was very nice. And um, they might never remember your name or anything, but they're going to remember who you work with and that. And so the last note they leave on is a positive note. And that's why summarizing is a good thing. If it's been all negative things that you have to summarize, cut that summary very short <laughs> and go straight to the information <laughs> with that. So that's how you remember some of these key things. You know, today is just kind of a, a refresher around these, uh, these skills about um, good communication and uh, with these tricky conversations that you might have with, with people. So if I could just summarize, um, at the end of the day, it's going to help you get across your messages if it's a mana enhancing environment, right? If you apply the principles of REDS, and I hope you can remember those, um, R is for what? We better put that slide back up, Liz, help people remember. Um, can you just go back to, yeah, the one before. You remember? So uh, roll with resistance, because if you can remember just the red laws, 
um, you've got the fundamentals of managing tricky conversations. So roll with resistance. That's what the R is for. Express empathy. Remember, people have feelings and emotions and they're real. Uh, develop discrepancy because they're hearing, they're hearing some fairly far out messages there. And then they're also hearing some good messages like, um, you know, Fano begins with whakapapa. So develop that discrepancy um, and support self-efficacy. Um, rangatiratanga. People are, are the best place to make informed decisions about their own whānau. They're the experts when it comes to their whānau and their whānau well-being. So that's the reds and then of course these ones that we've just covered about practice these skills. Open-ended questions. Always look for something to affirm somebody about. Whether it's just their smile, um, there is always something to affirm people about and reflective listening a skill that we all have to work on because when we ho ha ourselves or our buttons are pressed out the window it goes good reflective listening so work on that fun i just practice it and we get better and better and always do a summary as brief as it as it can be finish a corridor on a very positive note and Fano will remember that. And, um, you know, you are the best place ones. Your circles of influence are quite huge. You're coming into contact with people every day that will benefit from your contribution of um, good information. Um, but remember, give that over in a mana enhancing way and um, you will be able to uh, make a difference Make a difference, even, even if it's like people can still choose not to take up, you know, what uh, the, the invite to have a vaccination. But if nothing else, you've enhanced their mana because you've helped make their day a better day, whether it's from just the way you, you be through your smile or through your lovely way of communicating you have made a connection and that in itself is enough for the day. So I want to finish uh, my all there and, and thank you all for, for your listening, even though it's on, co uh, on this, um, you know, this uh, Zooey thing, um, still, we're still able to listen to each other. So nā mihi nunui ki a koutou katoa. Kia ora. Tanakoi Pam, thank you very much. Um, so that brings our workshop to an end today. Um, as people have been asking, we will share all of the presentations and resources. We have a, a booklet that we will distribute to you. We've also got a bit of a cheat card for around ores and reds, so that'll be helpful to keep on, on your desk. Um, we also have some runga that we'd like to share to thank you all for um, uh, being a part of our community and helping share the messaging and um, encouraging people to be immunized and and you know practice the six things we can do to keep each other safe so to that end i'd just like to thank you all very much for coming today um, really appreciate it we as i say we really we really like to do this face to face but you know we've had an opportunity to be with 40 of you today in in this um, alert level two so kia ora and tanakoi <laughs>